Okay, think I'm live? Yes, uh, I'm live on, on my end over here. So today, guys, uh, last time we did the live stream was pretty good. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot because there was a lot of good communication and a lot of things learned f by you. And so today, uh, if you hear me, say привет in the, in the chat uh, so I can know. Actually, let me see if this is even... Yeah, this is public. Okay, good. Maybe the statistics are loading slowly. Yes, yeah, brilliant. Okay, all right. Now I know that I can start because I'm right here. I have zero people watching. So, Daniel, привет. Daniel, I've been emailing you about the camp. Um, please check your emails. It's important. So, today we'll talk about how to finally start speaking Russian. Um, the reason why I am big on this topic is because a person joined our Bifling class, which is like a different, it's not Bifling campus, it's a different um, membership um, program. And her problem was that she said that she knows, she had been using Duolingo and stuff, so she knows how to, how to express certain things, how to talk about certain things, but she doesn't know how to, how to speak. So her, her skill of speaking, speaking is not developed. And then I had another person, just like only one day, uh, message me on Instagram saying, hey, I've been learning Russian for three years and I don't know how to speak it. Like I, I cannot express myself, I cannot speak Russian. It's very hard for me. And so I decided to talk about this because this is something that I shared with some of my students before and i don't think i've ever talked about this as a holistic thing on youtube ever so speaking and communication in russian is not that hard it's not that hard so let me close this blind right here so it won't be any reflection of my face there you go speaking a language is not hard it's not something that very complex okay it's not something that is only available to few individuals it's just the fact that it's very you have to be very disciplined for you to master speaking okay you have to be very disciplined it's not something that um, only the smart person can do but it's the only thing it's something that only the disciplined person can do and uh, they can do it well let me stop here for a second to read the comments to read the yeah message Christianin na fondovej birže, privet. I don't know uh, nothing in Russian. How can I learn on my own? I don't even know how to start. Marco uh, Vinicius. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. But um, how to start? Alphabet. Alphabet and start. Um, this is actually. Okay, let me, let me start with, with this topic because it kind of relates to your question, Marco. So. For you to start speaking Russian, of course, first you have to know the alphabet. Of course, yeah, it's just uh, the default thing. You have to know the alphabet. So, Marco, start, start with the alphabet. And then the next step after that is why do you learn Russian in the first place? So you can express yourself in Russian. So the first step of uh, figuring out how to express yourself is how do you express yourself in English now? What are you doing now in English? For you to express yourself, what do you say? What are you talking about? What do you do? Right? So, for example, for me, I can talk about working out because right now it's a big topic for me because I am working out currently a lot. Right? So, how can I, let's say, okay, I'm learning French right, right this second, I'm learning French. So, I'm going to use the analogy of French for you to understand better. So, for example, when I write a sentence in, uh, in French, what, I, what am I talking about? What I did today or yesterday or two days ago, right? I describe my past. What did I do? Because most likely when I uh, greet a person, let's say I have a friend who is French. How am I going to talk to them? I'm going to talk about my day. What happened to me yesterday, two days ago? What happened to me today? What did I do? What am I, what am I going to do tomorrow? So just I'm talking about my life. And so, Marco, for you... Uh, how do you start with Russian? Try to express yourself of what you did or something that you want to talk about. 
right? Describe your life. Describe yourself. Who you are as a person. How many how many family members do you have? What kind of food do you eat or not eat? How do you like to you know hang out and have fun? Do you party? Do you drink? Do you smoke? Do you just go to the club and just dance? Do you go to the cinema to watch movies? I don't know. Whatever it is, start to figure that out. Start to understand、um, what do I want to say, and then learn how to say that. Things should not be、uh, your progress should not be made. You should not be led by some program. Okay. Like for example, we have Bifuling Kim program starting soon. By the way, if you want to learn how to communicate well in Russian and you want a, a step-by-step guide, it's the only link. It's the only link in the description. So join. We have a couple of spots left. Don't miss out. But we're gonna teach you how to communicate well in Russian, how to speak and listen, and all that kind of stuff. Shameless plug. So your learning should not be led by any program. It should be led by your goal of. Whatever it is. So, for example, your goal is to speak Russian. If you're be fluent in Russian, to speak well, to understand others well, to make as little mistakes as possible. Right. So, that's your goal. And you should learn things that help you achieve that goal. First, you learn how to say "My name is." Right. Because that's the first thing that you're gonna say to a person. Um, so you imagine you talking to a person, right? Me talking to my friend in French, for example, or a stranger in French. What am I gonna say? First things first, I'm gonna say my name. My name is Fedor. Je m'appelle Fedor, right? So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna speak in French here. Let me not uh, uh, distract you guys even more. So I'm gonna first say my name. Then I'm gonna ask them, "What's your name?" Right? And then I can imagine a simple conversation going. How was your day? My day was good. I did X, Y, and Z. Then I'm gonna ask you, ask them, what did you do? How was your day? Right. So I just simply imagine the conversation that might happen between us, and just learn the vocabulary. And then slowly I will complicate my sentences more and more and more and more and more. I'll learn new vocabulary. I'll learn past tense. How do I describe my actions in the past? I'll learn future. How am I talking? How do I talk about the future? How can I say I will go somewhere? How can I say I won't go somewhere? Right. So it all starts with one conversation, and then it spirals to be bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, until my vocabulary is so big that I can ex- express everything that I want to express. So first things in communication is to understand that your learning should be re- should revolve around your communication and improving your communication. So much that you can talk about anything whatsoever. Okay, that's the first thing. Realize that whatever you're learning,、uh, you know, Russian, whatever other language you're learning, it should revolve around your goal of communicating. That's number one.、Uh, I'm gonna take a little pause, see what you guys are saying in chat, and then keep going.、Uh, you should do a video on Duolingo. They have changed and improved a lot. Oh, I didn't know that. I probably should check it out. I met people from Russia today. They they said my Russian was without an accent. Wow,、uh, congrats! That's a pretty good compliment. I took that as a compliment thanks to you. Well, of course,、uh, I don't know why it's thanks to me, but <laughs> it's good that you don't have an an,、uh, an accent. That's that's pretty good. That's pretty impressive. Does Google Translate help? Yes, of course,、um, Esther Nina. Of course, Google Translate is my go-to. You know. Thing when I'm learning French right now, it's on my phone. I do it every single day because what I do is is I think of a sentence that I want to say, right? Okay, let me actually show you guys the chat of what I'm seeing.、Um, okay, boom. I am right here. So, oh, it's kind of too big, huh? Let me make it a little smaller. There we go. There we go. So Google Translate helps me a whole lot because what I do is is I don't go for things that I already know in French, right? So I don't go for things that I already know how to say in French. I first make a sentence in Russian of what I want to say, and then I try to translate it to 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 French, right? Then I try to translate as much as I can myself into French, and then whatever blanks spaces spaces I have, 
Google Translate is my helper. Google Translate right here on my phone, it helps me every single day. And that's how I learn new words. You know, for example, I actually I do it, I do it two ways. First, I learn the word in Google Translate, and then I check it in reverso context. Context. It's a it's a website where they don't just give you the translation, they give you a whole bunch of sentences where that word is used, so you can see uh, whether that word is correct or not. For example, one of the words was to say, right? And then I thought it was to tell, but from from the universal context, I realized that it was to say something. Okay, so that's how I do it. Um, okay, I think you need you need a Russian keyboard. Okay, it's not to me. I'm studying medicine in Russia, but it's so hard for me to study language. How how to improve my speaking skills? Um, to be short, to start speaking. To start speaking to yourself and on basic topics, but we'll get to that actually in this in this live stream soon. Google does help in, in test situations only. Yes, yeah, sometimes. Currently trying to think. Okay, well, you're welcome. It's pretty that not Russian keyboards on most devices. Yes, what are some to get to get a, what are some Russian stereotypes that get on my nerves? Um, they don't get on my nerves because they all have some some truth to them. It's just the fact that people don't understand Russians as much. And that's that was the reason why I started teaching Russian, really. It's because I realized that people have a lot of stereotypes. And I, I cannot say, hey, that stereotype is not true. Don't say that anymore. It's offensive. No, I cannot say that because, you know, it's my, it's my opinion. It's not the truth sometimes. And so I realized that if I teach people the language, those who are truly interested will go to Russia and will speak to Russians and find out that some stereotypes are just simply not true. So I'm empowering you to uh, erase those stereotypes for yourself. And that's that's my goal. That's it. I found that your channel just, uh, has helped me relearn the basics. Thank you. Have you thought about streaming CIV with Russian interface gaming game setting? What's CIV? Oh, Civilization 5? Or just Civilization? I don't know. Uh, hello, pretty fun here. Pretty fun. Yeah, Portuguese is pretty similar to Russian. Okay. Then to look grammar first, or should I keep the intermediary? Okay. Um, I'll get to that. Okay. So, back to me. Um, and when you start, and I'm going to answer Marco's question because it, it kind of goes along with, uh, with my idea here. First, you realize what your goal is. You know, so speak Russian or do whatever you want to do in Russian, right? And then you only learn things that will help you achieve your goal. And Marco just asked if he should learn grammar or not. Well, will a particular grammar topic help you in your communication level? If it won't, don't learn it. For example, now I'm at the point right now, I just realized that uh, I have... Um, if you tell, I think it's a French water. It says right here, um, Vitel is full of minerals uh, from the deeps of French mountains. So, <laughs> kind of uh, ironic, huh? So, um, for, with me in French, for example, I I had my you know method in mind, of course, because I think it's right, <laughs> right? So, well, why, why would I learn any other way? And I learned a, a couple of phrases, and I realized that, okay, I'm talking about what I did before a lot, so I should learn past tense. And I've learned, like, one conjugation, one uh, one group of verbs, which is, you know, I have done something. They have kind of, like, a similar, similar rule there as well. And so I learned it, and that's it. I don't learn anything else, because... I didn't learn future, I didn't learn present. Well, present kind of, I did with the conjugation, but that's besides the point. I didn't learn anything besides past tense yet, because I don't need it. Why would I clutter my mind and my knowledge with something that's useful to me right now? First for, first of all, I'm going to waste my time right now. Second of all, I most likely will forget it, because I find no use in those rules. And thirdly, I will make... My French way too complicated, way more complicated than it has to be. I'll make it harder on myself to learn it. 
Why would I do that? You know, so only learn things that are that will help you uh, speak Russian. But back to our main topic and how that can help you. So first, first things first, you only learn things that you that will help you that will help your communication. Secondly, there are a couple of things that go along with speaking and communicating in Russian, um, and it's pronunciation, actual speaking, and listening. Grammar and vocabulary are kind of like the helping blocks. They're not, they're not the speaking ones themselves. Of course, you have to have vocabulary for you to express yourself. You have to know the words. You have to know the grammar for you to structure the sentence as well. But um, those two are, it seems to me, those two are the easiest to learn. Uh, grammar especially, it's, it's very easy. There's a whole bunch of rules on the internet. There's a whole bunch of books and guides and stuff. Vocabulary is kind of easy too. You have your Google Translate right here where you can easily just learn uh, new words. So it's kind of easy. But pronunciation, speaking, and listening are the three of the ones that are the hardest ones because it's the hardest to improve upon. Sorry. Those are the hardest to improve upon because they're very... How do you tell whether your listening has improved? It's very hard to tell, right? It's very hard to realize when that happened. And so typically, students avoid doing those things because it's hard to understand whether you made progress or not. It seems like you're doing something redundant, but it's not. So let's start with speaking. How can you actually improve your speaking? What do you do on a daily basis for you to improve your speaking ability? In my humble opinion, and I've seen students use this and it has helped them tremendously, Every time you practice, if your goal, if you if you think like your vocabulary is good enough, your pronunciation is good enough, your grammar is decent, you only like in speaking, then every time you practice, select a topic and speak on it for 10 minutes. Preferably record yourself. Get your phone out and record yourself speaking. Okay? Just put it like in front of you, start speaking on some random topic. It doesn't have to be anything profound. It doesn't have to be anything to wake, way too complicated. Just get a topic. Headphones. Right? I can now talk about headphones for 10 minutes at least. Maybe less. You know, maybe um, those 10 minutes, are, it's kind of like a arbitrary time. You can speak for 5, for 2, for 3, for 15, for 20. It's up to you completely. But start speaking about something. For example, the headphones, right? Headphones. Um, let me just give you an example of how to do this. I have a lot of headphones. Um, so my speaking practice can be like this. Let's say I'm learning English right now and I'm going to speak in English. I have these headphones. These are over-the-ear headphones. You put them on your head. Boom. You plug these headphones in the computer or in your phone and you listen to music. They're also in-ear headphones like these. I typically take this with me on the walks or whether I'm going somewhere, you know, where I'm going to be walking around. But when I'm in my house, I use these big ones. Also, I have wireless headphones for running. Also, um, I love good headphones because I enjoy music a lot. So, as you can see right there, some random topic about headphones I spoke for. A minute. I could have gone, you know, further, but for the sake of this live stream, I won't do that to save your time. So, the same thing with anything else. Phone. Phone can be enjoyed in uh, iOS. I have this speaker right here. Speakers are pretty good, uh, good music quality. I have my notebook right here. For example, I journal. I, uh, you know, have my um, to-do lists on this one. I can talk about that, why I made to-do lists. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of topics around you that you can talk about. And you don't have to have a real Russian person to talk to, to practice, okay? It's enough for you to just start the recording and start speaking. Because what you do there is you build the muscle. You build the muscle for your next time, for your next encounter with Russian. Why do people only speak when it's time to speak, when it's a person in front of you who's Russian, ready for you to speak, waiting for you to speak. You don't do the same thing with exams. Treat that as an exam. Treat that Russian person as an exam, right? Whether you pass or you won't pass. Students learn the the um, 
the knowledge of the of the subject before they go to take the, the exam. Why isn't it the same thing with speaking? Why isn't it the same thing with with the languages? Why do we only speak when it's time to speak? Prepare in advance. Yes, this recording and you speaking in front of yourself is not real. It's not what. Uh, it's not the most. Um, how do I say this? It doesn't look the same as speaking with the real person, right? But it will help you. It'll prepare you beforehand. That's first thing, how, what you can do. Secondly, of course, you can find a person online that you can speak with. Uh, there's a whole bunch of language exchange apps. Just type in Google, five best language exchange apps, and you're going to find them all. And just find a person there and start speaking. And that's the way for you to practice. Or... Another way, another, you know, um, step before that, step before speaking, like, actually in person, is you can find the language exchange person, and you just can record voice messages to them. Just record yourself speaking, send it to them. Communicate not through just text, but through text and the voice recordings. That's what I do a whole lot with my students when we are in a class and some person wants to communicate in something and talk about something. I would record a voice message to them because that will help them listen and train their listening. And if they record a voice you know, message to me, back to me, then they are speaking on a shorter scale, but they're speaking. They're, they're expressing themselves, themselves in Russian. Those 20 to 30 seconds of the voice recording is like a mini version, a demo version of, actual, of the actual uh, you know, dialogue. So it's a step down from the actual thing, which can help you prepare but the real communication and the real dialogue. So there you go. There, there you have it. That's how you can actually practice speaking. Um, so we covered speaking. We still have pronunciation and uh, listening to cover. So I'm going to now respond to the comments and then get back to it. Oh, I, I have quite a bit of comments. Okay. Thanks for this. Okay, let me actually show you guys the, the chat. Boom, 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 boom. I learned how to speak Russian with Google Translate voice, but the pronunciation is different when I talk to my Russian friend. Of course, because it's uh, it's slower and it's more distinct. distinct. Yes. To start speaking means to start speak whenever you can, even when you're wrong. Keep talking. That's right. Actually, uh, uh, it's a whole different topic. It's a whole different topic. Uh, I, uh, yeah, it's pretty important too. But it's a whole different topic. I can go on it for like ever. To help begin speaking, there are a few TPRS YouTube videos. Yes, look these up. TPRS Russian. So, uh, how can we get you here in U USA to teach? That would be something I would invest in, invest with. Uh, <laughs> I don't think. We will be in um, like in any school or anything of that sort, but we we teach online, you know, uh, because a lot of our people, for example, right now we we are studying be fluent camp in four days, but the people that that are there now, I ask the question, what's your country? Where are you from? And there has been maybe like ten to fifteen different countries already in that one. So I don't know if me just teaching in in the U.S. like in person. Is going to kind of dis disclude, I guess the word is, all the people around the world. But if we are online, then, you know, that's, uh, everybody is, is happy. Yes, I'm trying to learn app, okay. This method is correct. Good, thank you. Good for that. Uh, you can write 10 best apps, why 5? Yeah, you can, you can, you can anything. <laughs> but you're going to find the top ones anyway. Uh, when I visit Russia, where do you recommend to maximize learning? You mean like in a school or, 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 or what do you mean by that? If you are, somebody says, get sent to prison. <laughs> That's interesting. But uh, I would say just simply if you're in Russia and you want to maximize your learning, just don't speak English. Learn Russian, speak Russian, get misunderstood, don't understand them, but you would train that skill of trying to figure out things and trying to find the common ground with, with certain people. So I would say just don't use any English anywhere you go. 
maybe sometimes when you have to understand something when it's like a crucial situation when it's life or death kind of thing then of course then use the you use english but as much as you can use russian uh could you recommend as good music in russian it's all subjective uh, i would say for learners it's good to listen to some rap Rap music. Just type in Google. I mean, just just type in uh, Russian rap, and you're gonna find something. Exclude, not exclude. Yeah, exclude. Th thank you. So uh, find something. Just whatever your 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 preference is in in music in the first place. Just type that rock in Russian. Russian rock. I don't know anything, and you can find it because it's also it's all you know about the taste. My tastes are very different from the most. So all right, back to the topic. So, speaking is uh, dealt with. Now, pronunciation. How can I improve my pronunciation? To improve your pronunciation, you have to always compare yourself to a native speaker. You always have to, um, you know, kind of check whether your pronunciation is good uh, with a native speaker. The best thing to do is to actually ask a native, hey, can you change my pronunciation, please? What do I mispronounce? And learn from that. Take their feedback as absolute truth. If they're telling you this is wrong, then this is wrong. You know, try to adjust it to sound like them. Because any native is understood perfectly in their country. Of course, not all of the natives, but the majority of them. If they live in Russia, that means that they're understood in Russia. And you have to kind of speak like they do. Because they're understood and you maybe not. So... When they give you feedback, take that as absolute truth to finally, you know, master master that uh, pronunciation skill. But how, um, what, 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 what you can do on your own is you can have, a, like, let, let's say, a recording of something, of a sentence. And uh, you can pronounce that word yourself or that sentence yourself and compare you to how the sentence sounds from the native speaker. And see where the mismatchings are. Can you hear my dog barking outside? I'm pretty sure you can. If he's going to keep going, I'm going to... Yeah, you guys can hear, huh? Let me, let me shut him up real quick and then I'll be back. Boom. Hopefully he won't bark anymore. So, uh, yeah, and just compare yourself of how you pronounce words to how they pronounce them. And another very important key thing here is whenever you learn new words, whenever you make a sentence and you check it, let's say, in Google Translate or you repeat after the native speaker, make sure that you pronounce those words out loud immediately. Let's say I learned a new word. Let's say... Um, Mouse. I type it in Google, Mushka, right? Don't just go, Mushka, like, you know, uh, whispering to yourself. Say it out loud, Mushka, Mushka, because the whispers can sound similar, but the whispers don't use all the, you know, sounds, all the sp spectrum of sounds that's used in actual word. And you won't ever whisper to a Russian. Well, maybe when it's uh, private and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let me not go there. All right, so you'll barely use uh, whispers to a Russian, okay? Maybe in the romantic setting, setting only, but that's about it. On the street, you cannot whisper. So what's the point of you whispering the word back? Just say it out loud. Say it like it is. And that will help you get the pronunciation of most words right immediately when you learn them. Because it's, a very, it's much harder for you to learn a new word and learn... Um, it's much harder for you to relearn something and how something pronounced when you already have a strong foundation that you thought was right. So start learning right off the bat, right? Start learning right immediately instead of uh, then having to readjust. Okay, that's uh, that's different for pronunciation. There's not much there. I want to stress that pronunciation is one of the most important things in speaking because you can you can know two thousand, five thousand words in Russian. I don't know. You know, huge amounts of Russian words. But if you mispronounce 
half of them, then it's the same as knowing half the amount of words. So instead of knowing 5,000 words, you know 2,500 words, just because you don't pronounce them right. But if you have the pronunciation correctly right from the start, then you don't minimize your vocabulary list. You always are going to be able to express yourself well and be understood well. For example, I recently talked to a little boy in Russian. It's a, a pretty good example. A little boy in Russian, he knows many words. He knows a lot of words in Russian. But because his pronunciation is still bad, because he's, he's a kid, right? Of course, he's going to get better. I could barely understand him sometimes. He would talk about something, and I'm like, that sentence did not make any sense to me because I don't know what he said. Of course, I didn't say it to him, but I just, you know, played play along. So don't be that kid. Don't handicap yourself. Don't make it hard on yourself by not knowing the right pronunciation. He knows many words, but because he, his pronunciation is bad, you know, for, for now, it, it's, it's the same as not knowing any words. It's the same as he didn't say anything whatsoever. It's the same as he didn't know those words at all. So, yeah. And finally, listening. How can you train your listening to start, you know, understanding Russian as well? Well, it's, again, a step-by-step -step process. It doesn't make any sense for you to be a complete beginner and assume that if I listen to Russians 24-7, I will, you know, uh, learn Russian. Most likely, of course, you can probably do that, but most likely you'll get discouraged by the fact that you don't understand anything. Like, you can watch a movie and you'll be like, all right, I don't understand nothing from this video, from this movie. I didn't understand anything whatsoever. So why am I even watching this? What I recommend is take it slowly. Take it slowly and take it, take it easy on yourself. Start first, first things first. If you want to improve your listening, then... Start maybe like watching a movie or something, but start watching them watching that movie with Russian subtitles. I know there's not many out out there, but you can probably find some. So because with Russian subtitles, most likely the movie is going to be clear. What's 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 happening is going to be clear from the visuals. Uh, when you see things on the screen, it makes sense, even though you may not understand everything. For example, I watched um, this cartoon Asterix and Obelix in French with French subtitles. And surprisingly so, I understood a whole lot. You know, I understood more than I thought I would. Because, first of all, a lot of words are very similar to English. And second of all, I kind of know a little bit of French. So certain things kind of clicked when I see the visual and I see the word. They kind of click together to make, to make sense finally. And so do the same thing. You know, watch a Russian cartoon or a Russian movie or a Russian series, whatever, with Russian subtitles. Because you will read the words and you will pick out how they sound, you know, and, and you will make sense of them from listening to them. Okay? Do not, I mean, you could probably watch a, a movie with English subtitles to understand what the movie is about. But what I, what I found is that you typically understand it from the visuals already. You don't need... Uh, the actual words and the actual meaning for you to understand the whole the whole thing. Typically, it's clear from the context. And so, then, make it harder and harder and harder. Watch more and more and more of those movies, and slowly but surely, your your listening will be will be good. Listening is closely tied to vocabulary. If you don't know what the word is, you will you you, you wouldn't know what to listen for. Or what you yeah look for listen for uh, in the, in the sentence. So just make it easy on yourself at first. Don't demand too much from yourself. If you don't understand something and it doesn't seem like you're picking out any words, make it make it you know a little lighter. It doesn't make any sense. Again, it's like you know picking up a huge huge weight. It's a huge bar and you want to do bench press and you put six hundred. Uh, pounds on it and you go I cannot I cannot lift it up and you're trying to do that over and over and over and over and over again most likely you would never lift it up <laughs> ever right but if you start with a hundred pounds boom 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 110 boom 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 slowly but surely you may eventually get to 600 pounds I'm not sure if it is too much actually probably for the you know um 
power lifters is not so much, but you get the point, right? You start, don't start on a high level. You won't achieve anything. Start small and learn and, and build yourself up to that high level. And that's it. So then you put together speaking, vocabulary, uh, listening, pronunciation, and grammar into one little unit and you start speaking well. And we do all of that, again, in Bifluent Camp. We do all those things. We teach you all those things for you to start learning, start speaking Russian well. Uh, and we, we started Bifluent Camp in the first place because people couldn't, couldn't speak. That was our main goal, is to get people to speak Russian. Because a lot of the goal, a lot of people have the goal of speaking Russian, but they are going in a different path. They learn grammar, they learn vocabulary, but they never speak, they never listen, they never do any pronunciation, anything of that sort. And so we incorporate teachings of pronunciation, listening. We give you all those things. Like I said, you know, get a get a cartoon with with Russian subtitles. We'll give you that to listen to, right? We'll give you all the content that you will need to finally speak Russian well on the basic level by the end of those eight weeks. So join up. Um, it's what? Uh, today is 24th in, in, in Novosibirsk, but probably where you are is 23rd still. So join. Uh, it starts on 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 the Thursday. And yeah, if you if you won't, won't be there on time, it'll be closed off. So don't miss out. We're waiting for you there. You will learn a lot. You will, again, promise you, you will speak Russian. By the end of it, you'll be able to understand a basic conversation and, and and speak on the basic level as well. But now is the time for some comments again. Uh, let me know what you guys are thinking. Okay. All right, there's a whole bunch of um, there's a whole bunch of comments. Okay, uh, I think we stopped right here. I love it there. Why do Russians use this? Oh, it's like um, it's like a emoji. So instead of, I mean, I use this a lot. See, like it automatically goes to emoji. But if I send it, let me see if it goes. Yeah, see, like it's, it's emoji. It's um, old way when before before the emojis, we used to just go, you know, column column, and then the bracket to make a smile, you know. And then there's a whole bunch of them. Like for example, like this. Oops, I'm not typing. See, like it's a it's a laughing face, but if I type it, let me see. You see, it goes to the to the emoji. So before the emojis, uh, we used to do that, but to shorten it, we didn't do the column. Great and got it. Uh, what kind of dog is a, a German Shepherd? It's not that loud. You can hear the doggy, but it's not that loud. But um, it will kept on going. It would be annoying. How to improve vocabulary? Um, earlier in this in this call, I said just learn the things that you need for communication. Figure out what you want to say about your day, and what you want to um, you know talk about, and learn the vocabulary. Vocabulary is is one of those things that are building up one by one by one by one by one you know it's not like you can insert in your brain a hundred new words you have to learn new words one by one and get comfortable with them so yeah uh, is the video frozen not frozen for me this was for a second okay uh, okay um, oh but probably it froze because i left and i wasn't moving huh? Okay, let me see. Do you know how to make good quads? No, I buy it. <laughs> you have to know how to make things when you can buy them. Uh, how many hours a day? I'm assuming how many hours a day should you study? Um, depending on, you know, the, the more you study, the more hours you put in, the earlier you will master Russian. You know, if it's 30 minutes a day. Okay, let me just help me going. If it's 30 minutes a day, then... You will learn maybe in two, three years, four years, if you do it every single day. For example, I had a, I had a, a person, had a student who she learned it for six to eight hours a day, and she was fluent, fully fluent, in six months. So she started learning in August of, I guess it was 2018, and then in January of 2019, I could speak Russian to her without a word in English, on fashion on her day all those kinds of things right i could speak to her uh, pretty well 
and she understood me completely. So she's, but she spent six to, six to eight hours for half a year. I'm listening to Sergei Vazirev for, for album right now to change my pronunciation. Uh, it's pretty good, but pronunciation from the songs can be tricky because sometimes they misstress the words to make it poetic. Uh, you handled the left chat very, very well. Keep that up. Thank you. <laughs> my wife makes it 100%. Because you know, oh, look, was. Yeah, as did Daniel's wife. <laughs> how did it, how long did it take you to learn Russian? How long did it take you to learn Russian to English? What do you mean? Well, um, I'm a native Russian speaker, so it didn't take me anything to learn Russian. I guess about five years <laughs> of my childhood. But uh, to learn English, it took me not to minimum. Um, I don't know. Jeez, maybe like eleven to twelve years. So, I, of course, in school, I started school at, when I was six, and we learned for 11 years there. But toward the, toward the end, I realized that I want to go to the U.S. to study, to go to university. So, I started learning with a, with a tutor for about three years. That didn't go anywhere, almost. Uh, it kind of helped a little bit, but what helped the most is me consuming English content. You know, me watching shows, me watching YouTube videos, me listening to music. But my mistake was something that I just taught you. I didn't speak. I didn't speak at all. I didn't listen almost ever to a real person, real, real communication. It was all music and shows and stuff. But I never, I never challenged my my listening. And so when I came to the U.S. finally, I realized that yo, I, I, I cannot speak. I don't know how to express myself. So don't make the same mistake. Uh, da, 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 da. Four hours a day, sometimes I have to step away. Wow, I, I wish I had your, your dedication with my with my French. I learned maybe like for 30 minutes, 20, 30 minutes, and then I, I get busy with something else. Um, can you tell me a Russian cartoon that was famous? I have one art channel. We have a Winnie, Winnie the Pooh. Um, Winnie the Pooh. And we have, of course, we have um, English and Russian subtitles. Then we have Winnie the Pooh, we have Crocodile, and then we have that one art channel as well, uh, the, with the subtitles. I like the one, the, it's, it's a new one, Smishariki. The two, the two before were from USSR, but Smishariki is more, um, is more modern. So I'm late, oh, oh, so okay, how many hours a day? Uh, He's talking about the class. Um, so for, for before in camp, we, maybe you need to have 30 to 45 minutes a day to complete the tasks that we give you. So we give you five daily tasks. Sorry. Yeah. Five tasks a week. So one every weekday to complete a task, to learn something, to do something, anything, to like to master the topic at hand. And each, each of them, maybe on average 30 to 45 minutes. Sometimes, of course, more, but they're all stored and archived, and you can access them at any point of time later. So if you ever miss them, then, uh, yeah, you can always catch up. In Russia, it sounds like it's common to learn English in school. Is that accurate? Is, is it a statement that kid, Russian kids often take some? Yes. So is it common that Russians learn English in school? Yes. Uh, I mean, like in the States, people learn Spanish. But does anybody speak Spanish, really? No. The same in Russia. Um, unfortunately, schooling system, language schooling system is very, very bad, you know, anywhere in the world, I guess, in Russia and in, in, in the States at least. People learn, you know, English for 11 years and they don't speak it. It's, how's that possible? The channel's great. Grinding through beginners courses to speak with a, a fencing coach. Well, that's good. Thank you for your feedback. I have to say, you have helped me a lot learning and getting more comfortable with Russian. Thank you. Keep up the good work. I'm more than happy to help. I had no one to practice with. Find a language exchange partner on any language exchange app. Make it sense to use a dictionary, a real book, and an app for searching for words. I don't do that because to me, I just go in the rabbit hole of, okay, what does this word mean? And then I find a word in the definition that... I don't, I don't understand. Then I had to look that one up. And then again, it's just easier for me to, quicker for me to translate it to in a Google Translate. I speak Spanish almost every day. I live in the Bangor, 
bilingual household. Good. Well, soon you're going to be a trilingual person with uh, Russian. What's Russia like? I'd hope to go there someday. Russia is great. Russia is good. People are very reserved and uh, very welcoming. But once you get to know them, they're very kind and open. But Russia is different for everybody uh, who, who visits. What language exchange apps do you recommend? Tandem. Uh, oops. Tandem. That's not the right one. What do you recommend to get closer to Russian culture? Um, learn the history. Learn the history of, of Russia. Maybe observe how Russians are. Observe how they act and what they do and stuff, and just how they how they behave, how they carry themselves, and yeah, that should be good. I don't know. The Russian culture is all, um, yeah. Russian Russian culture is is very different for everybody, you know. So you have to actually get get closer to people, you know. For Russian people, Finnish is easier to learn than English. I don't know anybody who learns Finnish in Russia. Daniel, again, uh, I'm not sure if you if you heard me. Check your email. I sent you the email about the fluent camp. It's pretty important. Any tips for language learning exchange to Russia? No any good reputation. No any programs with good reputation, uh, especially support visa assistance. Um. I don't. I've had a lot of them reach out to me for some promotions, <laughs> saying, "Hey, can you shout our school in on your on your channel?" I said, "No, no." But I don't. Seriously, Daniel, I I I, I won't be much of a help to you here. Um, you know, it's better if you look at yourself and see and see for yourself. Russian culture is more more fun than U U.S. culture. So is Mexican culture. We're born here. Uh, I I I doubt it that you're born in the states. Just the fact that states is like a combination of all different cultures together, and so it happens sometimes that there is no U.S. like almost almost no U.S. native culture. But be, but those that combination of cultures is the U.S. culture. You know. Why people ask why I'm learning Russian? There are many migrant speakers in St. Louis, and this has me learning uh, learning it. Uh, Russia is the old old empire, and I think the language is beautiful. I agree. I, I think so too. What type of music do you like? I like hard rock, metal, rock and roll. Uh, when did you move to U.S.? I didn't move to U.S. I went to I went to the school in U.S., which was in 2014, and I just finished my master's this year. Peter the Great and Katarina. I, I did get that email, I believe. I responded, thank you. Okay. All right, good. I just didn't know if you did. It's a nice group of people. Yes. Both have an amazing role in history. Oh, Peter the Great and Katarina. Yes. Everyone, thank you for videos. I've learned a lot in the past years. My dream is to move to Moscow when they last year and I loved it. Good. I wish there was a bigger Russian population on the west coast of the. Of the Bigger Russian population, go to San Diego. It's a lot of them. Go to San Francisco. It's a whole lot of them. What are you talking about? What is the best Russian dish? To me, it's pelmeni. Uh, I also enjoy a lot of other ones, like blinchik. I mean, there's a whole bunch of them that are that I that I like. It's hard to really pick out one. You're a great representative of Russia. Thank you. I love your videos. For the first time visitors, uh, where's a great what? Where's a great Russian city to visit? I would say. Of course, Moscow and St. Petersburg. The, those are the most adept to, not adept, equipped for, um, for tourists and foreigners. Because there's translations on every street. There, I mean, for every um, subway station and stuff. So, yeah. Um, cool. What was the best food in your childhood in Russia? Oh, my gosh. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a, I have, a, I love sweets a lot. So anything that my grandma would make, like sweets, I loved it. Like piroshki. Piroshki. There goes the dog again barking. Tort, which is cake. She would make her own homemade tort. Pretty good. What's the biggest Russian word? Uh, do you like Avenged Sevenfold? Bruh. Hold on. I um, might get demonetized for this, but I'm going to be quick. If you tell me what, what song this is, 
um, then you're the real, real Avenged Unfold fan. Leave out! Mm. Okay. Yeah, this one right here. This one my favorite song. I'm not sure if you know this one. I'm, I'm gonna pause it to not get my test. Let me show you something about Avenged Unfold. I'm gonna be right back again. Never mind, I don't have it here. But um, when I was going back to Russia, I bought the shirt. Pretty pretty dope shirt uh, from Avenged Sevenfold. And I brought my friend one as well because he loves them too. I love Avenged Sevenfold. It's pretty good. Can I wait until the new album or until the tour again? Maybe I, I can check it out. All right. From the stage album. Yes. God damn, yes, that's right. <laughs> Hello. So, all right, um, guys. Bonnie and Rasputin. Yes, it's, it's a pretty, pretty dope song. All right, um, guys. Thank you so much for joining in today. I enjoyed this talk. I enjoyed the the, the conversation that went went on. Uh, if you want to improve your, your communication, if you want to find a master your communication and speak well in Russian and just be great in Russian. Join the Fluent Camp. I'm not joking. People are actually speaking Russian after the eight-week uh, process. And so join if you want the same for yourself. I just shared a lot of good tips that you can do on your own for free. You don't have to pay anything. Or you can pay a little bit to have some guidance with uh, with this process with Fluent Camp. So check it out. It's the first link in the, in the description. I think it's the only link there. So just check it out. And I'm going to see you there. And thank you a lot, a lot, a lot for joining in today. I'll see you, I'll see you next time. Probably in July. Пока-пока.